Uh, Tom Ingracia, welcome. Thank you, Ramona. Thank you. Now, he is a Motown historian. That in itself could be a whole show. I mean, just an entertainment manager. He's a lecturer and motivational speaker, so you know we're going to have a lot of fun we on are. the show today. Uh, he's also a life coach, and he's going to talk to us about what that is. Tell us your story, Tom, to how did you kind of roll in? I know it's a lot <laughs> of work, it, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, really, I'm, you know, I, I am living, breathing proof that dreams do come true. I, you know, we, we, we all have dreams, mm. but so often we think that our dreams aren't possible. And, and my dream started when I was 11 years old and I was lying on the beach listening to my little transistor radio <laughs> and I heard this exquisite sound coming out of the, the radio and it was the sound of Motown. It was the Supremes singing, Where Did Our Love Go? Mm -hmm. And I was in love. I fell in love with that sound. I followed a, a, a traditional path. Uh, you know, I went to college, graduate school, and I worked for 25 years in higher education. But I always knew there was always this, this something inside of me saying, there's something out there, there's something out there. But you were teaching because you were in education. I, w I was teaching, I was doing advising. So every, everything that I've done through my life prepared me for what I'm doing now, which I think is the case for most of us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're all in a, a, a state of constant preparation for the next phase. Uh, for me, what happened is when I was in college, I had the opportunity to interview Mary Wilson from the Supremes. So that was my dream come true. Yeah. Because you know, when, when I was 11 years old and I, and I had that, that epiphany listening to that music, and then when I saw the group on television for the first time, I said to my mother, I'm going to meet them someday. You know, and, and here eight years later, I'm sitting in a room like you and I are sitting right now, interviewing this drop-dead gorgeous woman who is a member of the most famous female group in the world at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I, I interviewed her for this article I had written. She saw something in me and took me under her wing um, and, and kind of nurtured this, this dream, this desire. And then 10 years ago, I'm celebrating my 10th year as, as a successful entrepreneur this year, 10 years Congratulations. ago. Congratulations. Thank you. And, and that, that, that in and of, of itself is amazing. But 10 years ago, mm -hmm. um, Mary was in Boston performing in a musical, and uh, she asked me to come in and sell her merchandise in the theater at night, and that was it for me. That was, that was the moment. I said, this is what I wanted to do. This is what I've been waiting for. And during that two-week period, she said to me, I need someone to manage my merchandising business for me. Mm -hmm. Would you be interested in doing that? Well, that, that was it. I mean, that was the golden opportunity. I literally marched into my university office the next day, and I said, Bye. I'm out of here. My dreams come true, and I, I have something. I have something else I have to do, and that was it. That was. I mean, that. did you did you, did you feel a little fearful? Were you a little like you know? Well, how am I gonna? I mean, I've got the steady paycheck coming in, and now I'm gonna go to. You know, I, I was so I was so certain, you know, I, because I'd known for so long that this was what I was waiting for. There was not a moment's hesitation. Now, I I, I have to say, I'm I'm very fortunate in that. My wife has been very supportive of this, and right from the start, right from that moment when I said, okay, I'm leaving this secure job mm -hmm. to go into the unknown, she said, I know this is what you want to do. I know this is your dream, mm -hmm. and whatever I have to do to support you in that, I will do. So I had that, I had that security net mm -hmm. underneath of me, Bill Wilson, for five years. Um, for three of those five years, she was based in New York City. So mm -hmm. I spent five days a week in New York. I would take the bus down to New York on Monday morning, mm -hmm. come back home by bus on Friday night, mm -hmm. and uh, you know have have my little normal life yeah. and hold it on the weekend. You know, schlepping the trash and yeah. and, and and you know doing the cutting the lawn and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And then during the week, you know, I was just I was living this dream life in yeah. in New York. Entertainment manager came with your experience with her. It, it did and then one, extended it, to? It, it did once I, when I was working for Mary. I started meeting other people in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Arlene Smith from the Chantels, uh, who had the, you know that wonderful song in the fifties, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. It really and, and and is the mother of all of all girl groups. I met Arlene Smith, and she said. I'm looking for a manager. Would you would you be interested in working with me? Um, what an honor! Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, is. Uh, Bar Barbara Alston from the Crystals asked me to help her write her autobiography. So you know, here I am, this 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 kid who had grown up listening to and idolizing these women in the '60s, and all of a sudden I was working with them. Well, wait a minute. You you, you know you have this piece of music history that you know about that needs to be perpetuated. People need to know about how significant this was in the 1960s because 
music in the 60s was, was such an integral part of culture, society, politics, uh, you know, and, and, it was, and so, for sure. It, 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 for sure. And, and so I, I put together this lecture program called Motown and the Civil Rights Movement, talking about the, the social issues in the 60s and how the music really helped to foster racial integration in the 60s. Mm -hmm. But but it's all, you know, it, it was based on everything I'd learned growing up and everything I had listened to growing up. And then you now, have that practical experience and, of meeting her, uh, being with right, her. And, I mean, it, she must... Yes emanate part of that history yes. in her being. Yes, yes. How could she not? She, and, Just and, and that's, you know, and that's one of the things I think that I always appreciated about Mary Wilson is that she does have a good sense of history and she does have a good sense of her place in history and the importance that this history has overall mm -hmm. uh, and, and but and, and I have to I have to say just to, because it's just popped into my head one of the a, a piece of that history of course you know the Supremes the glamour and the glitter and those gorgeous gowns they wore she kept Mary Wilson kept all of those gowns all those gowns from the 60s that were designed by Bob Mackey and all the top designers of the day the first project I worked on when I when I went to work with her was get putting all those gowns together into a traveling museum exhibition. Those gowns now travel around the world. And again, that's, that's a piece of cultural history yeah, that, that, that she's sharing with the world, world because people have such strong memories yeah. of those costumes. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, the, the, they've been, they, they toured England for a year, they've been at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, they've been around the world. And for 25 years in higher education, when I, I made my life transition, when, when I reinvented myself, um, I kept all my connections with my former colleagues because mm -hmm. I never believe in burning bridges. Mm -hmm. So I, I would go to, to professional meetings and, and, and chat with my colleagues and everybody was saying, you have to get out there and start telling people how you, how you did this, how you made this yeah. transition. Yeah. And I kept saying, no, nobody wants to hear from me. I don't have a story to tell. Mm -hmm. And they kept saying, yes, what you did was pretty gutsy, mm -hmm. you know, and we want to know how to do it too, but, but we're yeah. too scared. How did, yeah. how did, and I kept saying, no, no, no. Finally, I sat back and I, I, you know, I did a little bit of thinking about what it, mm. what it was I really wanted to do with my life. And I said, wait a minute. Yeah, what you did was pretty amazing. And that's how the whole motivational piece started. So, so for me, the, the motivational piece is very organic. It's all, you know, it's all based on my own experience and this, this journey that I've been on mm -hmm. for the past 40 years. And you know, the, the, the ups and the downs because it's, it's never easy living into your dreams. It takes, it takes hard work. And, and, but but my, my message really with the motivational program is that you have to believe in yourself, mm -hmm. you have to believe in your worth as an individual, yeah. and you have to be prepared to seize the opportunities when they present themselves to you. Yeah. Because if you don't seize them, you may never get a second chance yeah. at that opportunity. Right. But it, it's, all, it's all organic, and, and it really all came about from my colleagues and my friends pushing me mm -hmm. and saying, you can do this. And, and so that's what I do now. Uh, you know, with the motivational programs as a life coach, I work with other people saying, you can do this. If yeah. this and do you if work one-on-one -on -one or do you work with groups? And uh, both, both. I, I do one-on-one I do -on -one coaching, uh, but my, my real passion, what I, what I love so much is doing the, the group presentations, whether it be the, the, the Motown program or my, my motivational programs. But again, in case someone wants to hear more about uh, the Motown um, his lectures, what's sure. that website again? It's www dot ingracia productions dot com that's beautiful and yes. you'll come in lecture talk about it um how I it will. has to you said that you had a lecture give us some of the time I, 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 well I, I the, the the two motown focused lectures that i offer one is is motown and the civil rights movement that one really i i discuss in that one uh, the, the significance of the music in the 1960s and how music and society really went hand in hand and, and how the music helped to foster uh, greater racial integration and how the civil rights movement made it easier for this African American music to become so popular mm -hmm. in this country. Uh, and then the second one that I offer is called Girl Power, the Supremes as Cultural Icons and that's looking very specifically at this phenomenon of these three young African-American women who rose out of the Detroit ghetto in the 1960s mm -hmm. and literally conquered the world. And, so they and, lived and, their and dream. Became, and, and became, yeah, and, and, lived their, and lived their dream. And, and that, you know, and that was, that, that, was, uh, that, that was very important. You know, and, and the, the, the significance of the fact that it, now 50 years later, you know, they are still the standard against which all female performers are measured. 
Uh, you know, you, you look it's at amazing. someone. You look at someone like today, like a like a Beyonce. Beyonce is the Diana Ross of this of this generation. Uh, you what know, a and, legacy and to leave behind. It is absolutely. And absolutely. not even know it at the time. Isn't that, that isn't that what a, yes. your passion is about? It is. Oh, God bless it them. Is. What a, what yes. a, a, yes. a boy. They must sit back and just just shake their head and they must smile and they must it, oh you it, yes. such oh such yeah. a blessing. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming well, Ramona, on. Ramona, thank you so much. This has been great. <laughs> Thanks. I am Ramona and you've been watching Ramona interviews. Have a wonderful week.